In this video, I'm going to discuss the modulus or the magnitude of a complex number. Um, we're go first of all going to start with the number 2. Now 2 is a complex number. 2 can be written as 2 plus 0i. All real numbers are complex numbers, as I've explained before. Let's suppose we want to get the modulus of it. Now the modulus of 2 is written like this. We just have vertical lines on either side. That's just the distance of 2 to the origin, this distance here. Distance is always a positive quantity, and the distance is 2. So the modulus of plus 2 is just itself. Let's look at the modulus or magnitude of minus 1. Now sometimes we say absolute value. Uh, we could actually use three words here, or three terms to describe the distance of a complex number to the origin. It's modulus, it's magnitude, or it's absolute value. So minus 1 is here. How far away is it from the origin? Distance is a positive quantity. Well, that's easy. Its distance is 1. Um, we could also look at the modulus of i. How far away is the complex number i from the origin? Well, that's 1 also. This, is, this point here represents the complex number i. And its distance is 1. We could have something like minus 3i. Minus 3i can be written as 0 minus 3i, just to remind you. It corresponds to the point with coordinate 0 minus 3, which is this point here. If we want its modulus, we just count how many, get its distance to the origin. Count the squares, if you like. And that answer is 3. This distance here is 3. So the modulus is always a positive real number. Now, what about this thing here, the modulus of 2 plus 3i? Well, 2 plus 3i is this point here. So we want to get the distance of it to the origin. We want this distance here. This distance is going to be the modulus or magnitude of 2 plus 3i. We could also say absolute value, I suppose. But normally we use absolute value when we're talking about the modulus of a negative real number or a positive real number, whatever, when we're talking about real numbers, basically. So what is this distance? Well, we can just construct a right angle triangle here. We can get the vertical distance between 2 plus 3i and the origin. It's this distance here, which is 3. And we can get the horizontal distance, which is 2. We have a right angle triangle, so we can just use Pythagoras' theorem to find the modulus. So it's the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. That's root 4 plus 9, that's root 13. Of course, we can also imagine using the distance formula. That's essentially what the distance formula is. It's just Pythagoras' theorem. Um, we want to get the distance between the two points 0, 0 and 2, 3. So one of the points is labelled x1, y1, and the other one is labelled x2, y2. And the distance between them, well, the distance is the modulus of 2 plus 3i, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared, 2 minus 0 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared, 3 minus 0 squared. So that's, I'm just using the formula square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And of course that's root 13. But that's just Pythagoras' theorem. So this just comes from coordinate geometry, getting the distance between two points. Um, it's quite easy in this case because one of the points is the origin. So um, all, we ha all we actually have to do is get the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary parts and get the square root of that sum. So in general, the modulus of any complex number, x plus yi, or x and y are any real numbers, is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Um, let's suppose we have this number here. This point here represents the complex number minus 1, minus 4i. Its modulus is its distance to the origin. So 
So that's equal to the square root of minus 1 squared plus minus 4 squared, which is the square root of 1 plus 16, or root 17. These will always be positive, of course, when you square them. And we can see it geometrically here as well. It's really just Pythagoras' theorem. We have a right angle triangle. The vertical distance between the points is 4. The horizontal distance between the points is 1. So we just apply Pythagoras' theorem. So the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 17. As an aside, an, an interesting result is that the modulus of a complex number, say in this case minus 1 minus 4i, is the square root of the product of the complex number with its complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of minus 1 minus 4i is minus 1 plus 4i. We just change the sign of the imaginary part to get the complex number. So we're changing from minus 4 to plus 4. The real parts stay the same. I explained in earlier videos that when we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, we get a real number. So let's see this again. We multiply minus 1 by minus 1 to get plus 1. Minus 1 by plus 4i is minus 4i. Then we have minus 4i by minus 1 is plus 4i. Minus 4i by plus 4i is minus 16i squared. This should be minus 16i squared here. Okay, if we break that down, these cancel out. So the imaginary parts actually cancel out. i squared is minus 1, as we've seen in as we know, of course, that's what all this is based on. i squared is minus 1, so we have minus 16 by minus 1 is plus 16, so we end up with 1 plus 16 in here, or the square root of 17. Okay, now, so I can make a general statement about a complex number and its conjugate. If we take any complex number, called z. The letter z is often used to denote a complex number and get its modulus. Well, that's the same thing as getting the square root of z times its conjugate. The conjugate is denoted by z bar.